So now that Diablo 2 Resurrected is happening, should you just abandon the classic game and sell all your characters and get a lot of form gold? Well, it depends. And that's pretty much the video. So thank you for watching everyone and have a good one. Alright, let's be serious about it. But um, this is a debate that is going on right now. A lot of people are gonna believe that in a year or two the classic game is going to be abandoned and the only people who are gonna stick around still having all the wealth and all the items and whatnot are going to be those hardcore pvp types who are basically keeping the economy alive at that point but uh, yeah i'm gonna take uh, an example here with my tesla in a build that i show quite a bit on the channel let's just go through what sort of wealth and average character as i have on my free accounts online so i think it's fair to say that if i had to guess right now i could probably sell all the loot on this entire character plus let's see stash items for maybe like 800 to 1000 fg 1000 would probably be a high bet but at least 500 for sure maybe 800 so let's see uh, laying of hands perfect i think that also may be perfect that's maybe like 5 fg a good little lead spring here is maybe 20 30 fg a rock belt is like 2 fg a good ring here could maybe be like 50 fg some upgraded gore riders could maybe be 20 fg a nice grief here very close to perfect could be maybe 50 to 100 fg an enigma is always worthwhile to just kind of sell fast but maybe 20 to 30 fg a dream sacred heart is going to be depending on kind of the market but i would think maybe 50 to 200 fg bit hard to say and the same thing for the helm is also going to be well it's going to be less than the shield but it's also going to cost like maybe 50 to 100 fg highlands ref doesn't really matter maybe one fg or whatever and then i have all these nice skillers here so they are maybe like 20 to 50 fg each and then i have all the small champs which are also going to be maybe 5 to 30 fg each so you can see that it quickly adds up and Nelius and Torch is also going to be default, maybe 10 to 20 FG each. And then I come to my priced little item here. I know this one is going to sell for at least 200 FG and maybe even up to 400 depending on the market. But 200 is 100% going to happen. So this is a call to arms War Scepter, which means I have plus 3 to Holy Shield and it's a 6 battle order. So that's a very priced item. And then I also just have a random spirit. And let's look at the stash a random fortitude but still okay you can see the life is pretty high and the resistance is 30. a uh, socketed guliam's face uh Vadungus is pretty high here but not really perfect some very close to perfect for cool grasp here probably one of the my best unique items that i actually have uh, some decent crossing blow gloves here uh, they just don't have a you know increased attack speed, but you don't really need that if you're fanatism aura. Another point of <laughs> kind of random <laughs> crossing blow gloves, they're not as good, but they have an increased attack speed. A very nice hill to stack a room here. A very great exile, and yeah, some other random items like this ring here is pretty good for sailor builds. And that's pretty much it. And this is just one of my characters. So you would think that someone like me who likes trading, the economy and all that sort of thing would be kind of questioning now if I should sell or not. Because again, the future maybe lies in Remus Resurrected. But I think we also have to talk a little about the nostalgic factor. And the people are probably always going to think that old classic is going to be like the mainstay for old time economy and I think there's always gonna be a demand for items uh, so personally right now I'm gonna hold out I'm not gonna sell any items because I also kinda just like to look back and see what I did manage to get yes it would be nice to cast out my what 20 characters that I have completely geared out such as my Tesla Dean right here but we don't even know how JSP is gonna play out in the economy and I think with kind of talking a little about JSP now, I want to talk a little bit about, um, <laughs> you know, I would think I'm the only content creator on Diablo 2, maybe besides Extremis that has kind of been shown JSP in their videos. I think that 
the majority would even like to see JSP being outlawed, banned or whatever in Resurrected. A lot of people straight up hate it as much as botting or cheating or duping. And I kind of get why. But I want to go a little further now and talk about another game, Path of Exile. So what you're looking at right now is my current need list on my Path of Exile character, which I played uh, back in December when I gave Path of Exile a chance again. You can see all these tabs here are items that I'm looking for or hoping to at least trade when I see the right price and the right item. You can do this literally in minutes, in fucking minutes, instead of wasting your time in public games like you do in Diablo 2. I also want to go back to my classic old example of why I even started using JSP in the first place. So a lot of people know that I was pretty active in trade games. I think I was even getting recognized just sometimes in like 2013, 2014 before I started doing JSP. But the main reason why I actually started doing uh, trading on JSP was because of these skellers here. You have no idea how hard and how long I tried to get just one of these freaking skellers here so I could finish up my Javason. Um, I think I may maybe spent two or three months in game every day just ha kind of having an open trade game, you know, making a game and being semi-FK for an hour or whatever in prime time. But nobody was ever gonna sell them to me in game. But as soon as I jumped on JSP, it literally, it literally took a week, maybe two weeks, and I had a full inventory to go and ready easy peasy. Um, yeah, it, 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 it was mind-blowing. And that is why I again want to show Path of Exile. You can see right here, uh, I'm on the official, yes, the official, so it's completely supported by GG the developer, or whatever they were called, Grinding Gear Games. Uh, it's amazing to see that even they support browser-based trading. It's so easy to look up. You can find literally anything with just uh, with their own tools. And I don't understand why a lot of people are against JSP. If it wasn't, I do say if it wasn't against because there is a lot of botting uh, that is kind of being filtered into the economy, which is again being boosted by JSP because it's a trade platform that kind of rewards botting. You know, the more you bot in Diablo 2, the more stuff you can sell on JSP. But honestly, it's the same thing with this site here. Uh, everyone is also botting in, in Path of Exile. I assume Axel never quite looked into it, but it wouldn't surprise me. Anyway, I totally do get why people are against DSP. I see it from both sides, obviously. The side of being you know, completely anti-bot, maybe solo play, self fun and all that stuff. Those people are not going to be interested in any form of economy or trading. I totally get those players. But on the other side, there are people like me who actually get a lot out of the game if they, it has a rich economy. I have always been into economy in games. I remember uh, when I played uh, an MMO uh, that was called Rift, so it's a pretty much dead MMO nowadays. It tried to compete with World of Warcraft and whatnot, but I only played that for like one or two months. It was actually very good. Uh, honestly, it was a very great game, but now it's literally nothing. It's yeah, it's just pay to win garbage or whatever, but it doesn't matter. But I remember already like hitting max level in that game the first weeks or whatever. And as soon as I was able to, I was just going to start crafting gear, uh, grinding gear, uh, whatever. And then flipping on the auction house, buying low, selling high. And suddenly I had enough, uh, was it platinum or gold or whatever it was called in that game, to kind of just buy BOEs that I needed and all that sort of stuff. It's the same thing with real life. Playing, <laughs> playing, trading efficiently or working efficiently rewards you more than just working hard. There's, I have a friend who plays WoW. He likes to never engage in the economy. Well, rarely he does. He just likes to farm, be self-sufficient, finding his own materials, crafting his own uh, items and whatnot. But I'm on the other side. I have like... Uh, I don't know, I maybe made 50, 60 million gold in WoW to this date now. Uh, that's a lot of gold. I obviously spent a lot of it as well. But anyways, uh, I have never grinded for anything since maybe Wrath of the Lich King. End of Wrath of the Lich King. I have never grinded, like, I have never been out doing an hour of herbing or um, finding ores or whatever. Never. Never. 
but I'm still one of the richest WoW players on my server for sure. Uh, and it's because I value, uh, I wouldn't say I value my time, but I know how to be more efficient about it. And I don't think that trading in game is being true to yourself, true to your own time. You know that there are people out there being smarter than you. When you go to work and you get your salary or whatever, you know that maybe your colleague is at home investing in his free time. So he's activating his money, whereas in a game you can be activating your time. And that is also why I really loved uh, Path of Exile's trading system when I played it for about a month in December. Uh, by the way, I might make soon a video on kind of my thoughts about Path of Exile. But yeah, that video might happen later on. Anyways, why anyone is like 100% against JSP, I don't understand. Especially if they are going to be balancing all the botting. Because obviously some of the items that I need for say in Path of Exile are incredibly hard to get uh, without botting. Like you can just take maybe the Cloak of Defiance and then you need specific stats on it and whatnot. And it's so hard to get if you're not botting. Not to mention something so simple as six linked uh, armors. Just to get a six link is insane if you had to farm it on your own. So I'm sure that the whole economy is kind of kept up by botting in Path of Exile in some way. Because for sure right now, if you didn't have botting online in Diablo 2, pretty much since whatever, 2008, 2010 or whatever, there would be no trading. Nobody could get items in Diablo 2 through trading if it wasn't for botting. And it's the same thing in World of Warcraft. I talk about it, I have made 50 million gold in WoW or whatever, but how much of that gold uh, is not bound to somebody botting? Uh, it's really, really just insane to think about that I benefit from somebody cheating in a game, but that's pretty much the sad truth. But now, I really do believe that the developers and Blizzard with the new modern battlenet system are at least gonna make it just a little bit harder to bot. For one example, you know that right now Diablo 2 needs CD keys. You can just buy a flip CD keys on an illegal site or whatever and then set up your next uh, bot account for Diablo 2. Battlenet works differently, 2.0 or whatever you want to call it, the modern Battlenet. You need a verify, verified uh, phone number, I believe, and it's kind of just more clunky to set up uh, a new account as well as 40 euros. 40 euros, that's a lot. When right now I think you can get a CD key for what, five or ten dollars or whatever for Diablo 2. So there's gonna be some hindrance, uh, as well as of course bot games in public games that are just leveling with you. They are maybe not gonna be as visible because a lot of people uh, are gonna mass report when they see bots in Diablo 2 now. Because we're gonna have a bot system. And no, and I'm saying that the bot system works Let's just be honest, it barely works in World of Warcraft. Like, you can run behind a bot in that's farming, you know, those stupid druids in Bastion or whatever that is farming herbs 24-7. Ten people could report them a day, you know, right-click the character's name and report, and it, it would still run for a week or maybe a month or two before Blizzard finally gets to those reports and ban the account. But by then, it has already, you know, farmed for so many hours, it doesn't really matter. Anyways, it's still gonna be better. So I don't think that botting is gonna be that much of an impact, which again is gonna make to me, or make me believe that JSP is not gonna be fueled that much by botters. But again, this is just speculation on my side. It's a lot of opinions and whatnot, so I would love to know your thoughts about the whole economy aspect of JSP. Should you sell your items now? Should you cash out? Should you just be nostalgic like me, keep all your items or whatever? and especially just how you see the bot problem and all those sort of economy things and how Diablo 2 Resurrect is, is gonna play out. Anyways, it's a long ramble video for me now, but uh, yeah, I had to bring this up now because I do see it a lot on forums right now, especially in regards to how the economy and botting is gonna uh, develop in Resurrected. Anyways, thank you so much for watching everyone and have a good one.